okay um, good evening students uh, can you hear me can you hear me Uh, can you hear me, students? All right, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, now in the memory management, remember one of the very basic formula that you should know if the memory address has n number of bits. Remember, uh, the memory size memory size will be 2 to the power n bytes so this is the very basic formula uh, that you should remember <clears throat> if the memory address has n number of bits memory size is 2 to the power n bytes this is the one of the very basic uh, formula that you should remember uh, to get the answers actually now, uh, how do you get this formula? Actually, I explained this in the previous class also, but I just explain it again. So how do you get this formula? Uh, you get this formula based on this actually. If you look at this um, bit patterns, now when you take the memory address, <coughs> uh, if you take this example, as your memory address has 16 bits. So if the memory address has 16 bits, then you can see these addresses can be written uh, by changing the zero and one like this. Then you will get the starting address, all the bits are zero, and then change the bits one by one. The final address, all the bits are one. So then how many bits patterns you can generate when there are 16 bits? We can easily show that how many bit patterns you can generate to the power 16 bit patterns. So that means how many memory locations you get to the power 16 memory locations. And then, uh, in general, remember one location, uh, one location, you have one byte. One location has one byte. So then what happened, total memory size will be, we have 2 to the power 16 locations. One location has one byte. Therefore, memory size, you can see 2 to the power 16 bytes. That is how you should remember how to get this formula. That is, if there are 16 bits for the memory address, you are getting 2 to the power 16 memory locations. Therefore, one location has one byte. Then how many locations are there? 2 to the power 16 locations. They have memory size 2 to the power 16 bytes. So then remember, if you have 16 bits for the memory address, memory size should be 2 to the power 16 bytes. So this is the formula that you should know <coughs> to uh, get the answer actually. Then, um, in addition to that, uh, uh, the, the paper I gave you, uh, if you, I think I have shared this paper with you, and I have given this copy to you, those who came to the class. Now, in this paper, if you look at these questions, these questions can be solved easily uh, if you know the previous formula. Now, in this case, uh, the other thing you should know, the other thing you should know is that uh, the 2 to the power actually. So 2 to the power 10 bytes. Remember, 2 to 10 bytes are equal to 1 KB. And 2 to the power 20 bytes uh, equals to 1 MB. And 2 to the power 30 bytes equal to 1 GB. And 2 to the power 40 bytes equal to 1 TB. Now, this is another thing you should know actually. That is 2 to the power 10 bytes. 
square root of the power 10 bytes equal to 1 KB, 2 to the power 20 bytes equal to 1 MB, 2 to the power 30 bytes equal to 1 GB, and 2 to the power 40 bytes equal to 1 TB. <clears throat> this is the formula that you should know uh, when you're going to get the answers. Now, in the first question, you are, you are given this address has 20 bits. So if the address has 20 bits, the memory size will be based on the formula we have studied. You can write the formula that is you are getting 2 to the power 20 bytes. 2 to the power 20 bytes. But we know that 2 to the power 20 bytes means 1 MB. Check on the formula, this is 2 to the power 20 bytes, but 2 to the power 20 bytes is 1 MB. So therefore, the first question answer is this one. Then the second question, uh, we are given the memory size is 2 to the 2 GB. So then that is actually reverse calculation, the 2 GB. <clears throat> then 2 GB means, now according to the uh, one we have discussed here, 2 GB means 2 to the power 1 multiplied by a 2 to the power GB. GB means 2 to the power 30 bytes. Remember, uh, 2 to the power 30. GB means 2 to the power 30. Then this is actually 2 to the power 1. We when you don't write it's 2 to the power 1. Therefore, it is equal to altogether 2 to the power 31 bytes. 2 to the power 31 bytes. Then you can see 31. 31 means uh, the number of bits for the memory address. Therefore, the memory address has how many bits? 31 bits. That should be the answer for the second question. And uh, for the third one, memory address has 25 bits or the word size. Word size, me remember word size means again the uh, number of bits for the memory address or which is the number of lines that are connecting the CPU and the memory or bus systems. Where how many lines are there? 25 lines. So that means memory address has 25 bits. Therefore, you can say memory size is 2 to the power 25 bytes. So that you can write 2 to the power 5 multiply 2 to the power 20 bytes. So this is actually 2 to the power 25 uh, bytes. Then uh, basically you can write uh, 25 means uh, 2 to the power 1. Yes, 2 to the power 1. Sorry, 2 to the power 5 and 2 to the power 20. Then we know that 2 to the power 20 means MB. 2 to the power 5 means 32, 32 MB. So therefore, memory size is how much? Uh, 32 MB, this one. So that way you can get the answer. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, I gave another paper actually like this week. That paper I will discuss again. Now I just want to discuss this one because some of you may have some difficulties in this paper also. And the paper I gave you, another paper, you can just try out. I will discuss in the, I, I'm planning to have another class actually online to discuss that. Then the fourth question, the solution to the external fragmentation problem. Now I explain this external fragmentation problem. Now in memory management, we have discussed this previously. Uh, one of the problem that will be occurred in the memory uh, in this contiguous allocation. Now remember this contiguous allocation, what is contiguous allocation? Contiguous allocation means the program will be loaded as a one contiguous block. Now, if this is the program that you want to load, we load this program as it is as a one block to the memory. So, which is equal as a contiguous allocation. And the contiguous allocation has two problems. What are the two problems? Internal fragmentation, external fragmentation. So, then you should know what are those two fragmentations. So, the internal fragmentation is, now as an example given here, you can see when this program exit, you get a pre-location. Now the pre-location size is 20. And we load a new program, new program size is 18 bytes. 
once you load that program here, here we have 20 bytes, and we load the program size of 18, then how much is remaining? Two bytes. Now remember, this two bytes is very small. Since this is very small, no one can use it because it's too small. So that will be wasting the memory. So this is we call as internal fragmentation. That is, you load the program to the memory, but the program size is smaller than the given memory segment. But that therefore, this remaining part will not be able to utilize by anyone. So this is a wasting of the memory. This is we call as internal fragmentation. <clears throat> Then the other one is external fragmentation. What is external fragmentation? Now, if you look at this example, here we have a memory location which is free, size of 40. Here there's a memory location which is free, which is size of 10. Then all together, here we have 40, here we have 10. All together, how much is free? 50. This much is free. Now we want to load the program, size of 50. But you can't load that program here because it is 40, it's not enough. And you can load the program here, it is 10, it's not enough. But all together, have 50. So then we have total pre memory available. Uh, however, uh, we cannot use this, load the program. So, which is we call as, uh, we call this as actually uh, external uh, fragmentation. We have the memory. Uh, we have the memory, but which cannot be uh, allocated to the memory. So then, this is we call as external fragmentation. Now, how do you solve this problem? Now, this is the external fragmentation that is total memory is available, but you can't load the program to the memory. This is called external fragmentation. Now, the solution here is that one is a compaction, other one is a paging. Now, what is this compaction? Compaction is very easy. Where what do you do? All these pre-locations, all these pre-locations, uh, we have a pre-location here, size of 40, and here we have the size of 10. What do you do? We combine them together. We combine them together, which is called as uh, compaction. So what you can do here is that we can combine the two pre-locations together. Once you combine them together, what happened? You get a larger pre-location size of how much? 50. Now, once you get that, you can lower the program to here. We can load the program here. So that is we call as compaction. But remember, compaction implementation is difficult. The reason is to do the compaction, this allocated memory should be shifted up or down. But remember, this allocated memory moving up or down is not difficult. It's not it's difficult. The reason is these memories are utilized by the process. Therefore, implementation-wise, compaction is too difficult. Therefore, what is the solution we are using in the modern computers to solve the problem? We are using the solution we call as a paging. Paging is a very simple concept. What is the concept? Now, we have the pre-location. Here you can see we have the pre-location size of 40. Here we have the pre-location size of 10. And we have the program. So in compaction, what do you do? We divide the memory into equal size segment. Like say this 40, 10 by 10 by 10. And this program also we divide by 10, equal size. So in the paging, the memory and the program will divide equal size. Then what happened? These four segments will be loaded here. And this last segment will be loaded here. Then the problem is solved, which is what we call the paging. So paging is a solution for the external fragmentation. So then problem is solved. So the external fragmentation means we have the memory 40, we have the program 10, memory 3, 10, both together 50. But you can't load this program size of 50. Why? Because this 40 and the 10 is not contiguous block. Then how to solve the problem? Divide this memory into equal size segment and divide the program into equal size segment. 
and some segment will go to one location, other segment go to other locations. Therefore, it is non-contiguous. So this is the uh, solution for the external fragmentation we call as a page. So that is the question asked here actually. So in the paper, the question is asking what's the solution for the external fragmentation? Remember, solution is a page. Page. <laughs> Okay, then the question number five, the memory address has uh, these hexadecimal values. We know that in the hexadecimal, you should know that in hexadecimal, one character, remember one character equal to how many bits? Four bits. One character equal to four bits. Therefore, here how many characters are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then 8 into 4, how much? 32 bits. Therefore, memory address has how many bits? 32 bits. Their memory size is how much? 2 to the power 32 bytes. 2 to the power 32 bytes. Which is equal to 2 to the power 2 and 2 to the power 30 uh, bytes. Just give me a second to connect the charger to the computer. Now, remember tomorrow, uh, the class at South Institute will not be held uh, because of the Korea day. Uh, but Sunday class will be held as it is at uh, Sigma Institute. Uh, Sunday class will be held. But tomorrow, uh, all the classes at Shakti uh, will not be held. Just uh, keep in mind. So then this is actually total power 32 uh, total power 32 bytes. So then that you can write as 2 to the power 2 and then 2 to the power 30. But we know that 2 to the power 30 means uh, GB. Therefore 2 to the power 2 is 4, 4 GB. So then this one is 4 GB RAM. Therefore the answer is here <coughs> 4 GB, this one. So if you have any doubts, you can ask at any time. <clears throat> yeah, the idea is that memory address has how many bits? Uh, this is in hexadecimal. <clears throat> we know that hexadecimal, one character, one character equal to four bits. Then uh, how many characters are there? Basically, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 into 4 is 32. Therefore, in binary, this address has 32 bits. Therefore, memory size should be 2 to the power 32. Then 2 to the power 32, you can write as uh, 2 to the power 32 bytes, which you can write as 2 to the power uh, 2 and 2 to the power 30 bytes. This is 2 to the power 32. 32 you can write as uh, basically 2 to the power 2 and 2 to the power 30. Remember 2 to the power 30 means GB. 2 to the power 2 means 4, 4 GB. That's the way you should make the calculation. Then in the next question, uh, Okay, next one, uh, what is the memory allocation strategy in the contiguous allocation? Now, contiguous allocation, we have three strategies, best fit, worst fit, and the uh, best fit. So we discussed that actually. Uh, these are three strategies we have. Uh, in contiguous allocation, these are the allocation strategies. Uh, we have the pre-locations, like here, there is a pre-location size of 20. 
ये जैसे पी लोकेशन साइज ऑफ टेन ये जैसे पी लोकेशन साइज ऑफ फोर्टी नाउ वी हैव प्रोग्राम टू बी लोडेड एट किलो बाइट नाउ वी लोडिंग हियर आर वी लोडिंग हियर आर वी लोडिंग हियर दैट इज डिसाइडेड बाय द स्ट्रेटजी कैन बी अ फर्स्ट फिट कैन बी अ बेस्ट फिट कैन बी अ वर्स्ट फिट फर्स्ट फिट मींस द फर्स्ट वन वी टेक द फर्स्ट वन दिस वन वी चेक विद दिस वन इज इनफ यस दैट इज इनफ विद इन वी कैन लोड इट हियर सो दे आर फॉर वी एलोकेट द फर्स्ट ब्लॉक बेस्ट फिट Best fit means out of these three, we want to find out which one is the smallest. So the smallest is this one. So that one is enough to load the program. So that is we call as best fit. Worst fit. Worst fit means out of these three, twenty, ten, and forty. The largest one. What's the largest one? Forty. So that will be allocated. So those are the three strategies uh, which you can use. <laughs> To make this allocation uh, in continuous allocation methodology. So then, uh, if you look at the answers in the paper, uh, basically we have uh, paging is on the solution, segmentation is on the solution, compression is the first bit. Sorry, a worst bit is the solution. First bit. That should be the answer. Then the next question: A computer register can process twenty bits. That means actually memory address has how many bits? Twenty bits. Then the memory size will be two to the power twenty bytes, which is equal to one MB. Two to the power twenty bytes. Two to the power twenty bytes means one MB. So the answer is both one. Both answer. Next question: uh, The fastest memory in the computer systems. So remember, the fastest memory is the registers. <coughs> registers are the fastest memory. Find the memory that is volatile. Volatile means when the switch top continuously be erased. So that is actually RAM, registers, and the cache. Remember, RAM, registers, and the cache are volatile when the power goes continuously be erased. And find the storage device which uses the large Laser beams. Remember, laser beams are used by optical devices. Optical devices are mainly CD, DVD, Blu-ray. So they are for answers CD. CD is the one which is used in uh, laser beams to store and retrieve the data. The next question: Computer has five to eleven B RAM, four GB virtual memory. The page size is eight kilobyte. How many bits are used for the physical memory? So the physical memory here is actually which one? RAM. RAM. So then, RAM is how much? Five to eleven MB. RAM is five to eleven MB. So five to eleven MB, you can write five to eleven means two to the power nine. Multiply by MB means two to the twenty bytes. Then you can write this is equal to five to eleven means two to the power nine. MB is two to the power twenty. So then, both together, you can write it is equal to two to the power twenty nine bytes. To the power twenty nine bytes. Then you can see address has how many bits? Twenty nine bits. Address has twenty nine bits. This one. Then the question number twelve. The computer has five to eleven B and four GB RAM. Page size is eight kilobytes. So those are additional information. How many bits are there for the virtual memory? Virtual memory is a four GB here. So then four GB you can write. For GB, you can write that is two to the power two into GB is two to the power thirty bytes. Remember, four means two to the power two, GB means thirty. Then you can see both together. You can write it is equal to two to the power thirty two bytes. Two to the power thirty two bytes. Then you can see address has how many bits? Thirty two bits. Therefore, you can write and process how many bits? Thirty-two bits. This should be the answer. Like you should be able to make that calculation using that very simple formula I gave you at the beginning. Now, when it's come to this part, uh, we need to have some understanding about the paging system. Now, I have explained to you the paging system. So, what are the things you should know in the paging system? Now, the paging system, 
uh, there are few things you should know that is the paging system remember we divide the virtual memory into equal size segment in virtual memory when you divide it equal size segment we call them as a pages pages then how do i find out how many pages are there to find out how many pages are there what you should do is we have to divide the total virtual memory size then to my calculate how many pages are there divide the total virtual memory size by one page size one page size when you divide by the page size you can find out how many pages are there as an example we have a 8 gb virtual memory page size is 2 kilobyte then you can divide the 8 gb by 2 kilobytes then you have to convert this into the same unit then only you can cancel it so by using that methodology you can find out how many pages are there in the system at the same time uh, you should know the other one that is actually number of frames remember these frames are coming in the actual memory actual memory means we call it as a physical memory or ram in that case number of frames number of frames you can calculate if you know the total physical memory size total physical memory size divide with the frame size remember frame size and the page size are equal they are for physical memory size divide by the page size so frame size as you know frame size and page size are equal because we divide virtual memory and the actual memory equal size segment in virtual memory we call them as a pages and physical memory we call as a frames so then Uh, by dividing the physical memory size by the page size, uh, you can get the total number of frames. Actually, then that is another formula you should remember. That is, to get the number of pages, you have to divide the virtual memory by page size. To get the number of frames, you have to divide the actual memory or physical memory by the page size. And then another thing you should know uh, to map the pages. now the pages are coming from the virtual memory that's this is a virtual memory so pages are in the virtual memory and they are mapped into the physical memory they are mapped into the physical memory so then what happen some of the pages will be in the memory some of the pages not in the memory yeah frame is actually name or terminology used to identify each now in physical memory we divide by segments so in physical memory we call as a frames in virtual memory we call as page because you have the actual memory and you have the logical memory or virtual memory in virtual memory when you divide by equal size segment we call them as a pages in physical memory when you divide by equal size segment we call them as a frames is that clear That's the difference between the pages and the frames. Page size and the frame size are always equal. Then we should be able to store these pages in different frames in the physical memory. So in that case, as you can see in this table, ah, uh, we can identify the page number zero. That means a page number zero stored in the frame number one. That is stored in the frame number one. and page number 2 so page number 1 which is stored in the frame number 3 but others c d e they are not available in the memory that's why this uh, frame number set as uh, invalid number so this table which does the mapping from page number to frame number is called as a page table so this page table also in the memory so then you have to remember this page table is used to do the mapping of the virtual address to physical address another key point you should know when you are going to do this calculation this memory address remember this uh, virtual address virtual address has uh, yeah some pages are not stored in the ram yes because as we know we cannot store everything in the memory that is the concept of the virtual memory some of them are in the memory some of them are in the hard disk that is why in this table in this table you can see these pages are not in the memory 
this uh, C, D, E, F, they are not in the memory. Why they are not? Why do they not in the memory? Because they are in the hard disk. That's the concept of the virtual number. You cannot keep everything in the memory. So the other thing you should know regarding this address, remember, when the CPU generates a virtual address, virtual address has two components. That is page number and the displacement. Page number, all this you can get from the number of pages. And remember, the virtual address has two, physical address has two components. That is frame number and the displacement. Frame number you can calculate from the number of, frame, number of frames. Displacement D. Remember this D you can calculate if you know the page size. If you know the page size, you can find the D. If you know the D, you can find page size. As given this example, page size is 2 kilobyte. 2 means 2 kilobytes means 2 to the power 11. Therefore, you can say D has how many bits? 11 bits. Therefore, if you know the page size, you can find the D. And if you know the D, you can find the page. Yeah, displacement means within the page, what is the lexile location? So that D displacement is always related to the page because the data will be stored in some location inside the page. So that location inside the page, now let's say this page is this one. The page is this one. This page something like this. Now we want to know exactly what location this page is. Data is stored in the page. Let's say your data is stored here at this point. In that case, D means the, the location, D. Displacement is the one which describes, okay, your data is in this location. D is the displacement. So therefore, you can calculate the D if you know the page size. And if you know the D, you can find the page size. So that is another key point you should remember when you're doing this calculation. So then if you look at the question paper here, a computer system has uh, 5 to LMB RAM and 4 GB virtual memory. If the page size is 8 kilobyte, then calculate the following. So how many bits are there for the physical address? So physical address here actually RAM. RAM. So RAM has how many bits? For that, we should know uh, RAM is 512 bytes. 512 MB, sorry. 512 MB. 512 means 2 to the power 9. MB means 2 to the power 20 bytes. Then 512 means 2 to the power 9. This is to the power 20. Therefore, it can be written as uh, 2 to the power 29 bytes. 2 to the power 29 bytes. Therefore, you can say uh, the address has how many bits? Address has 29 bits. Then the how many bits are there for the virtual address? Now the virtual memory is a 4 GB. 4 GB. 4 means 2 to the power 2. GB means 2 to the power 30 bytes. 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 30 bytes. Then you can see both together 2 to the power 32 bytes. Therefore, you can find out how many bits for the virtual address. Virtual address has 32 bits. Then how many pages are there? So then you should apply the formula to calculate the number of pages. So number of pages you can calculate. Now we know the formula. If a number of pages are equal to if a number of pages are equal to uh, RAM size. Sorry, number of pages are equal to virtual memory size. divided by the page size. So this is the formula you have to use. This formula, now according to this, our virtual number size is actually 4 GB. That should be divided by page size is 8 kilobytes.
so we have divide those two together then how do you divide uh, for gb four means two to the power two okay gb means two to the power 30 bytes four means two to the power two uh, gb means four thirty eight means Eight means to the power three kilobytes is to what ten bytes. Remember eight means to the power three this is to power ten. So then when you divide them together. Uh, then it is equal to then it is equal to 2 to the power 32. 2 to the power 32 bytes, same units, divided by 2 to the power 13 bytes. 2 to the power 32. So we have to subtract to divide them together. Power. Minus 19. Uh, when you calculate this, remember you know what is P page number. We have number of pages for 19, then P is 19. P is 19. So then actually on the address, we know that this address 29 bits. 29 bits address has two things that is p and d p means page number now page number gets how many bits we calculate the page number gets 90. Uh, or GB is to the power 32, page size is to the 13. Yes, now actually, sorry, uh, this is the physical address where you have the F and D. Then, uh, physical address has the two bits, so which has two components. P and D. So P gets how many bits? P gets 90. Then 32 minus 90, this one 13 actually. So you can find out how many bits for this. And D, D is how much? 13. Actually, this D you can calculate. You can calculate the D. Actually, D you can calculate from the page size. Now, here the page size in the question. If you look at the question, question page size is 8 kilobyte. Now, 8 kilobyte means. Eight kilobyte. Eight means two to the power three. Kilobytes means to about 10 bytes. 8 means to about 3 kilobytes to about 10. Then both together, you can write which is equal to the power 13. To the power 13 bytes. That means D is 13. You can have the D that man also. D is 13 because if you know the page size, you can find the D. And then uh, part D is asking calculate how many frames. Remember, frames you calculate only with the physical memory. Now, physical memory is how much? 5 to LMB. Then 5 to LMB divided by the page size. So if you divide the 5 to LMB, 
by uh, yeah, if you divide the phi to L M B by uh, eight kilobyte. So if you divide them, you will get the answer. Phi to L means to the power nine. Phi to L means to the power nine. K M B means to the power twenty bytes. Phi to L means to the power nine. This one is to the power twenty. That should be divided by the to the power eight means to the power three. Kilobytes means to the power ten bytes. So this one is three, this one 10. If you divide both of them together, divide these two together, that means two to the power 29, two to the power 29 divided by two to the power 13. Then it is equal to two to the power 16. Therefore, F is how much? 16. F is 16. Then you can see 16 plus 13, 29. That way you can calculate the values for F, D, and D. No, no, virtual memory is not the hard drive actually. Virtual memory means something which you simulate. It is not really available. To create the virtual memory, we are taking the space from the hard disk. The remaining part, which is not going to the memory, will go to the hard disk. Is that clear? So we will discuss this kind of question more. Then you will get more understanding. Now, if you look at uh, the next question, now in this one, it says that uh, physical memory has 2 to the power 20 and 4096 pages of the logical and page and logical address space and the 64 KB page size. What is the number of bits for the logical address? Now, for that actually logical address, we know that logical address we create with the two components. What are the two components? That is P and D. P and D. So P and D are the two things you use to calculate the logical address. Now, in this case, actually, P means it is due to the page number of pages. Now, here the number of pages are 4096. Remember, 4096 equal to 4096 equal to 2 to the power 12. 2 to the power 12. Therefore, P gets how many bits? 12 bits. And the page size is 64 KB. 64 KB. Now remember, 64 means 2 to the power 6. KB is 2 to the power 10 bytes. That is equal to 2 to the power 20. That is equal to the power. Uh, 64 means to the power 6. KB is to the power 10. Then both together 16. For 16. Therefore, page size is to the power 16. That means D is equal to how much? 16. Then you can see how many bits for the address 12 plus 16, 28 bits. That way you can calculate. Then how many bits are there for the physical address? I will specify the frame. Now, physical address, remember, only say the two components. What are the two components physical address? F and D. F and D. F is a frame number. D is a display. So now D already we know. D needs how much? 16 bits. Now, how many bits for the physical address? Remember, physical address is 2 to the power 20 bytes. Therefore, this address must have 28 bits. Then if you have 20, sorry, address must have 20 bits. Then this one should be how much? 4. Because 16 plus 4, both together will be how much? 
20 bits. The AND4 memory address will get 20 bits because it says that physical address has to the power 20 bytes. Here it says that physical address has to the power 20 bytes. Therefore, address must have 16 here, and this must be 4. 16 plus 4 is 20. That's how you should calculate. The next question, how long is a page table? Remember, uh, page table, number of entries, always equal number of pages in the systems. If there are some number of pages, for each page, you have to have the mapping in the table. Therefore, number of entries in the page table always equal to number of pages in the system. Now, this system has 4,096 pages. The next question, assume the each page table entry contains a valid in early bit in addition to the page frame number. How wide is page table? That means one entry. The page table one entry gets how many bits? That is equal to the, because in the page table, what do we store? Frame number and valid in early bit. Now here we have shown that frame number gets how many bits? Four bits. So we store the frame number in the page table, frame number four bits, and additional bits are there for the valid invalid or present absent. Then that bits and this one together, it's five bits. Your page table entry, you get how many bits? Five bits. Uh, how do I get the D16? Because page size. Uh, in the question, it says that page size is how much? So in this question, it says page size is 64 KB. Okay. It says that page size is 64 KB. Now here, in this question, it says page size 64 KB. 64 means 2 to the power 6. KB is 2 to the power 10. Because if you know the page size, you can find the D. Then it is equal to 2 power 16 bytes. Therefore, D is how much? 16. That's how you get the D. Always keep in mind, if you know the page size, you can find the D. Or if you know the D, you can find the page size. In this question, page size is given as 1664 KB. Therefore, uh, D gets how many bits? 16 bits. That's how you get the D. Then in the last part, what they are asking, you are given the page table uh, for the process A and you have to create the page table for the process B. So for that, actually you are given uh, Yeah, D actually, uh, you have to keep in mind, how do I get the D? Always remember you can get the D if you know the page size. If you know the page size, you can find the D. Now in this question, page size is 64 KB. So 64 KB is page size. Page size 64 KB. So in that case, 64 means 2 to the power 6. And KB means 2 to the power 10. Then you are getting 2 to the power bytes, actually. Then 10 plus 6 is 16. Therefore, you can write it is equal to 2 to the power 16 bytes. For 16 bytes. Then you can see uh, 2 to the power 16 bytes. When the 16 is the one D, D will be 16. That's how you calculate the D. Is it clear? Okay, then we just go to the last part. This one, you are given the uh, some example with uh, how these pages are stored in the memory and pages are stored in the hard disk. So you are given the memory RAM. This is the RAM. In the RAM, some pages are stored. 
but some others are in the hard disk. Process A and process B are there. They are everything in the hard disk at the beginning. Everything is in the hard disk at the beginning. But you can see only some of the pages of A and B. Page number three, page number five, page number zero, page number two. Those are in the memory. That's why it says that page number zero stored in the frame number four. Okay. But page number one is not in the memory. Page number two. Page number two is in the frame number five. Here. Yeah. Page number three is in the frame number one. Page number four is not in the memory. Page number two. Sorry, page number two in the frame number two. This one. Sorry, page number five is in the frame number two. Now, similarly, the question is asking to find out the table, page table for the process A. Sorry, process B. Now, process B, you can see uh, page number six, page number five, and page number four. Those sign memory. Then you can create a table to represent that information. So, this table, we have to store the uh, corresponding page number and the frame number. So, we have to have the page number, and corresponding frame number. Then you can see page number, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Like we have... Now, we can create a bit large table. So here we store the page number in this sign. Here we have the frame number. So then page number we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like. Then you can see according to this, according to given information, page number 6. Page number 6 is told in frame number 0. We have page number 6 is told in frame number 0. And valid in a little bit here, valid in a bit is one. And page number five is stored in the frame number three. Page number five is stored in the frame number three. That is valid. And page number four is stored in the frame number six. It is valid. Only these are valid, remember, others are invalid. 0, 0, 0, 0. That's a valid in a little bit. And here there are no any mappings for page number 0, 1, and 2, and 3. Only 4, 5, 6 in the memory. That's the page that you have to create. Is that clear? So today I have just discussed this first paper. Uh, next time I will discuss the other paper. So I gave you the other paper in class. Those who did not get, uh, once you come to the next class, I will do the second paper. Uh, just try out that also. I will discuss that paper also next time because this exam from 2018, 19, 20, like uh, last previous onwards, they have given a lot of big calculation type question in the operating systems. Early we didn't have actually. Last year there was a one whole question uh, from this operating system memory management calculations. Therefore, we need to study this one properly uh, to get the answers. Okay, then today I'll stop here. Thank you for coming. Please remember tomorrow exact the institute class will not be held, but uh, Sunday Sigma class will be held as usual. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. Okay.